The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service began trucking juvenile salmon from the Coleman National Fish Hatchery in Anderson, California to a site in the lower Sacramento River near the city of Rio Vista. The salmon are being transported over 100 miles in an effort to protect the small fish from drought conditions. In a sense, essentially, we're just having to go around bad river and delta conditions and get these fish to a point where they can continue the migration out to sea. Some of the obstacles that would face the three-inch salmon on a journey down the Sacramento River during a drought are low flows and clearer than normal river conditions. The lack of new water flowing into the river makes it easier for predators to find and feed on the small salmon. The lack of rain and snowmelt during this winter can also result in higher and potentially deadly water temperatures in the lower reaches of the Sacramento River. And in the delta, fish can get lost because a channel that's normally blocked this time of year to keep young salmon on course out to the Pacific has been opened up to allow fresh water to circulate more freely. Right now, uh, while the salmon would be making their trip down from Coleman National Fish Hatchery and down to Sacramento, uh, pretty soon the water is going to be diverted from the Sacramento into the inner delta to protect the human health and safety purposes and keep the salt water out of uh, the municipalities and irrigation. Well, when they operate the delta like that, the salmon go with the water and the inner delta, southern delta, are not a good place for salmon. This year is the first time salmon will be trucked from Coleman National Fish Hatchery since 2011. The reason the hatchery practices on-site release of salmon is to ensure salmon return to the upper reaches of the Sacramento River and particularly Battle Creek where the federal hatchery is located. Releasing salmon from the hatchery allows these small fish to imprint on the area on their way to the Pacific and hopefully return to Coleman a few years later to spawn allowing the hatchery to raise the next generation of Chinook salmon. The risks are, because we're so far away from where those fish originated, they're not likely to find their way home to the upper Sacramento system. So in three years, we might be minus broodstock, or sh in short supply of broodstock. Also, we're not likely going to provide fish to an upper river, uh, upper Sacramento river, in-river fishery. The task of trucking these fish is an example of people and organizations coming together to benefit wildlife and the people dependent on wildlife. Transporting salmon over 100 miles requires the use of California Department of Fish and Wildlife trucks as Coleman is not equipped for such a project. Both agencies have worked together on scheduling the use of trucks to transport thousands of small salmon. It's been a wonderful collaboration working with the state and in fact none of this operation would really work without them. Coleman National Fish Hatchery is not geared up equipment-wise to, to do this operation. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Coleman National Fish Hatchery will continue to monitor river conditions such as water level and temperature and use the best available scientific data to manage Chinook salmon in this drought year. Well, we're going to continue to watch the, the triggers and assess the triggers. The triggers are a variety of things, either uh, water diversion operation, in-river flow, uh, and water temperature in the delta. So if we can make, make some of those triggers, make it in a way that they're good for fish, then hopefully we can release some fish on site. Uh, if the triggers are, are met, in other words, meaning that the environmental conditions are still poor, then we'll be forced to continue trucking. But over the next two months, we will continue to uh, assess those triggers, and that will inform our decision on whether to continue trucking or to release on site or do a combination of both.